Hi, John. This is Krish Raghuram. Uh, I work at Intel and I'm representing the uh, OpenStack Foundation's product working group here for this interview. So thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. And uh, we, of course, interviewing you as the PTL for Swift. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, John. Uh, sure. I've been working on Swift for, wow, nearly seven years now. And uh, I have been a part of OpenStack since the very beginning. Uh, I'm the project technical lead for Swift, and I currently work at SwiftStack in San Francisco. Terrific. And tell us a little bit about Swift itself, which is the object store uh, in, in OpenStack. Right. Well, in summary, Swift is an object storage system that's designed to store a huge amount of data that uh, gives you extremely good durability and extremely good availability, even if you're storing things across uh, a wide geographic area. And so the basic idea is that the whole thing, the whole reason we're here is for applications, right? So applications need to store and access a lot of data. And when you've got data that needs to be accessed on the internet, when you've got uh, a lot of static content, things like uh, videos and images and documents and backups and scientific research sets and those sort of things. Um, in user created data from mobile phones, from playing video games to solving the mysteries of the universe, uh, Swift is what you need. Um, a cloud isn't complete until it's got object storage as part of it. And Swift is here to meet that goal and to provide uh, durable, available, and scalable object storage for applications. Great. Now, we've just come off a very successful uh, design summit in Austin. What are some of the hot topics uh, during the Swift sessions? The Austin Design Summit was, was very good, and we covered a lot of ground. And what I really, I mean, one of the highlights for me was at the very beginning and during the keynotes, when we've got a deployer in Europe, OVH, uh, gets up on the keynote stage and says, oh yeah, by the way, we've got 75 petabytes of data inside of OpenStack Swift, and that's on more than 23,000 servers. And that's just really exciting to see that sort of thing and to uh, hear how the community is embracing and using uh, Swift in production. So when we went from um, the the, just the basic keynote side of things and walking around and talking to people and seeing what's going on there. Um, we'll get into the actual design summit sessions and we had a few uh, really great things there. Uh, one thing that I like about the summits is that we've got specific time set aside for operator feedback. And these are the people, it's designed for people who actually run Swift in production and it's designed for me to get up at the front of the room and be quiet and listen. And uh, to have a lot of the Swift developer contributors um, sit there and listen to what the operators and those who are actually using Swift in production are seeing, what their pain points are, what's going on there. And so those are fantastic. We had uh, two solid hours of that in two separate sessions, um, which, which was uh, specifically dedicated for that. I would say that probably all of the sessions have uh, a good aspect of that. But um, some of the things that... Um, we're talking about there include, uh, you know, how to just the day-to-day -day operational things. It's like, okay, so how do we uh, make things better when you run out of space in your cluster and you need to expand? And um, how do you uh, get out from underneath your customers trying to put more and more data in faster than you can plug in hard drives? Or um, how are you dealing with what the logging messages are and how uh, monitoring what's going on and kind of the pain points that you may have seen in certain conditions and uh, the deployment choices that you have made. So that kind of stuff really get, gets the whole community to hear and understand the uh, kind of the real world practical uh, aspects of the project. And so those are incredibly valuable and I love those things. It's definitely a highlight for, uh, for the entirety of the open, uh, of the design summits. Yeah. So when we talked about more of the sessions, we went into a few separate, uh, you know, I think we had a, a lot of other stuff as well. Um, we talked about just general basic, uh, we've got these existing features, how are we gonna continue to improve them based in part on some of the operator feedback, based in part on what we actually hear in users uh, feedback uh, from. Uh, things like, well, how are we going to make uh, small objects uh, perform better? How are we going to make sure that the Swift client um, has the appropriate feature set? How are we gonna make sure that uh, the eraser, eraser code functionality is meeting the needs uh, that people have for it? 
Um, we talked with some other projects uh, about uh, integration there. One of the uh, integration points that we're working on that I'm pretty excited about has to do with the Searchlight project. Um, I've said that several times that if you've got a storage system, which Swift is a storage system, then there, the most important thing you can do with the data is store it. That's the first thing somebody wants. Great, you have to store it so that they can get it back later. But the second most important thing is that you need to know what data you've stored. So uh, it doesn't really matter if I've got 75 petabytes of data stored, if I can't find it, if I can't figure out what's there. And one of the things that we're working with on the Searchlight team is uh, a metadata search integration. So right. that's the, what the Searchlight project is set up to do is to integrate with things like uh, the Elastic Search uh, stack and figure out how to uh, put data into there efficiently so that we can do efficient searches from a system that's designed to do that specifically that. Uh, and this is something that in fact in the uh, ecosystem of, uh, that we have seen a lot of people do already. We've seen um, IBM has something like this, a software already uh, being used in production. We know that HP has been working on this. We know that uh, SwiftStack has been working on this and using this with various customers. And we've heard other requests from other people as well saying, hey, we need like to do this. How do we integrate this in? Um, end users keep asking us for it. And so what's really great is we've got that pressure from the end users plus the uh, interesting thing going on inside of OpenStack itself with the Searchlight uh, team, right. which means that together we can come up with um, a a very good solution that's going to help everyone out. So I'm excited about uh, seeing progress on that and seeing what goes, um, what comes from that. Um, I expect good things to happen there. Um, one of the other uh, big things that we talked about that's uh, one of the um, major things, it's, it's the top priority in the community right now and something that we're expecting to deliver within the Newton timeframe is our encryption at rest functionality. So, when you're going to store data, if you need to ensure that that data is stored, encrypted, the, the best way, no question, is that you encrypt your data and then you send it to the storage system. Okay. And that's great. What the, there is a need, however, uh, for, to, sen to send data to the storage system and have the storage system itself encrypt the data. And this has some operator benefits that are really interesting. It's not something that's particularly protecting against uh, anybody seeing your data because you're sending the plain text data to the storage system itself, of course. But what it can do is ensures that when the data is durably stored, then it is not able to be read by anybody who doesn't have the proper credentials. So one of the greatest things that this is going to enable is, well, you don't have to worry about hard drives being lost or shuffled or RMA'd or uh, recycled into other servers and exposing data. And this really helps, especially a lot of larger enterprise groups who right. say that we have to make sure that this is da uh, encrypted data stored, even if it's sto encrypted on the, um, on the storage system itself instead of on the client, because that allows us to meet the legal requirements we have to store personally identifiable information, right. uh, medical stuff, insurance stuff, financial things, all of that kind of data. And so this is something that is really going to uh, help increase adoption and uh, re remove barriers for adoption for SWIFT inside of a lot of these uh, more traditional enterprise places. And uh, in the community itself, once we're building this foundational feature, we'll be able to add other things onto it. And of course, we're working very closely with the Barbican project uh, to deal with key managements and, right. um, and how we're doing the, the, the secrets. Um, and that's going to allow uh, some greater functionality uh, in the future that uh, is pretty exciting. And so I would say the last thing that was, came about in the Austin summits, I mean, there were a lot more, but the last big thing I'll mention here today is that we have had some very interesting, um, almost research and development uh, style of work happening uh, for about a year or so now, uh, involving rewriting some of our, um, some of our backend uh, durability pieces in um, a different programming language. Uh, Swift is written entirely in Python right now, as are most of OpenStack projects. But one thing that we've been looking at is uh, some efficiency improvements that we get by using a language uh, called Go. And uh, the results have been incredibly promising. And uh, as a community, we came together in Austin and were like, okay, so we've seen this. 
We've seen what's happened. We've heard it being talked about at the past two different summits. We've seen presentations on it. Uh, we've seen people who have, uh, in fact, even started running this in a way uh, inside of production. Right. Right. And uh, it looks very successful. And so one of the things that uh, we've been doing since the Austin summit is, okay, what is this? And we're not rewriting the whole thing. We're just taking the specific things specifically. We're looking at uh, focusing on uh, replication speed and being able to uh, uh, make sure that the data, that the uh, consistency engine inside of Swift is as efficient as possible. Right. And so, right. Uh, we'll be working on that. Uh, that will take us beyond the Newton cycle uh, to get that implemented in, uh, and merged most likely. But it's still a major effort that's uh, now underway uh, kind of in the, in the mainstream of development inside of the Swift community. Yeah, you covered a lot of ground there, and there is, there is really good summary oh, yeah. of everything that was covered. Now, you did end up also identifying specific user needs or problems because you talked of scalability, monitoring pain points, uh, performance issues, and then you talked about the whole elastic search and you know the search capabilities being put in. And, and of course, you rounded it off with these new features that are you know, being worked. Would you say then that uh, the, you know, one of the top priorities for Newton is really the encrypted storage thing? Uh, that's, that's really one of the top priorities. That is the top priority right now that we're, okay. we're currently working on and expecting to um, have uh, wrapped up within the Newton timeframe, yes. And can you think of any others that uh, would be also be high priorities uh, in the Newton cycle itself? Well, that's the, one of the great things I love about the Swift community is that the people who are actively contributing and the companies that are actively contributing are significantly invested with production clusters um, of Swift. And what that means is that every day we're hearing from the end users, uh, we're hearing the requirements that people have and we're working to improve the experience for operators and end users um, to, to solve storage problems. So, if we identify a problem, we're gonna start working on that problem. And we're not going to wait to schedule it for allocating it within a certain time frame, or it's right. gotta be done by this sort of thing. What we're saying is, look, we've identified a problem, we're gonna solve it. And when is it gonna be solved? When it's done. Right. So <laughs> I think the, the feedback that we have, uh, especially at the summits in person, uh, but also every day throughout the, the overall community discussion, uh, from operators, from production deployers, from end users, uh, and many times those end users being actual uh, paying customers of our respective employers of the, of the broader community. Uh, what this means is that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of other stuff we're going to be working on inside of the Newton time frame there. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean that we've uh, necessarily said, well, we have to get this done in Newton, or we're going to wait until after Newton to get these other things done. Right. Right. What I've laid out is like, right. we know that encryption has been being worked on for a year or more already, and we expect it to wrap up within this uh, before the Newton right. release happens. Got it. We also uh, are going to be working on these some of these uh, bigger things like the uh, the Golang uh, stuff within the Newton cycle. Uh, but we've also got some interesting things going on as well. So some other features, uh, new features, including uh, people who are working on automatic tiering of data uh, inside of changing storage policies based on different rules. Uh, people who are talking about uh, how to more effect effectively manage uh, global clusters, uh, how to uh, how to improve performance uh, with specifically looking at replication and, and erasure code, uh, rebuilding, optimizing for small files. So these are all the things that are going on that um, will continue to be going on during the Newton cycle and also beyond that. Yeah. And if I looked at all the things you covered and if I up leveled a bit, it seemed to me that some of your key themes are scalability, performance, and manageability, you talked a lot about monitoring. Is there anything else that comes to your mind uh, as, as some of the, one of the key themes? When, when I define Swift, it always starts with, it's, it's about storing a lot of data. So from the very, very beginning, um, uh, Swift is about scalability. Yeah. And so yes, we've had massive amounts of data being stored in Swift today um, all over the world. But that doesn't mean we're done, per se, with solving the scale problem. We're always looking at making sure that we can, um, that we can continue to move forward. So we have demonstrated uh, that Swift is perfectly fine with storing 100 petabytes. But what happens if we needed to store 10 exabytes of data in the system? Those are sort of the kind of next level 
things that we'll have to be talking about as we look to the years ahead and how data is just exploding and there's this huge need to have scalable and durable and available storage. So at the same time, we also recognize that if somebody has a storage system, it's only useful to the degree which it's actually used. So it's gotta be in production, it's gotta have applications that are being written for it. So uh, those sort of things come down to a lot of the manageability of it. And okay, so what is the day-to-day -day operator life? What happens when you have hard drives fail and servers fail and how do you need to be alerted and how do you need to keep track of what's going on inside of the system? So there is a the high degree of manageability. And then um, the interoperability sort of things, looking at Searchlight integration and Keystone integration and okay. other parts of the OpenStack ecosystem. I think one of the things that's really great about OpenStack in general is that you've got a suite of projects designed to implement a, a you know, cloud infrastructure inside of your own data center. And the whole, the, the whole is better than the sum of the parts. It's really great to have a good storage system and it's really great to have a really good compute system. But together, it means that you can have what we term cloud native applications that are designed to elastically scale and that's really fantastic. But you also have a storage system that can handle all of the data that those right. uh, scalable applications are, are generating. And so together uh, and dealing uh, and improving that interoperability story and even across clouds, I know it's a big uh, part of OpenStack, is something that is uh, really important. And so I think these things together, the scalability, manageability, and interoperability are things that aren't particular themes that we're gonna focus on, but they really need to be baked into the DNA of the Swift community itself and uh, the things that we're always thinking about with every peach line of code that we write and every patch uh, that we review and add into the project. Terrific, terrific. So is there anything else you'd like to add, John, to the OpenStack community uh, as a kind of a closing pitch? Well, I am, I, Swift is amazing and it is amazing because of the community behind it. And I am incredibly proud to have uh, been working with and continue to work with uh, the, the people who are actively contributing into Swift. Um, we have been growing very rapidly over the last six years of OpenStack. Uh, we've re recently passed uh, 550 total uh, cumulative unique individuals who have contributed into Swift with either uh, writing code or reviewing code. And we'd love to have everyone come join in and be a part of that. There's, there's things that we can do that will satisfy whatever needs you have. If you're looking for, I just need to solve some bugs, I wanna help write some documentation, I want to solve some, uh, some small things to get involved with an open source project, we have something for you. But if you really wanna dig down into the deepest la layers of, of the kernel and file systems and want to understand how those interact across massively scalable distributed systems, we've got those problems too, and we need your help. And so I'd love to have people come help out. Um, my email address is me at not.mn, and you can find me on IRC in the OpenStack Swift channel. It, uh, my IRC nick is not my name. And so please feel free to reach out to me and uh, or ask on the mailing list or ask on uh, in IRC and I will, uh, we will find a, a place for you within the community. Thank you very much, John. Really appreciate the time and, the, uh, uh, and, and the, the summary of all the points you've covered on this interview. So thank you very much. Thank you, Krish.